Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Retro Funhouse Podcast. It has been a while. It's a new year. Yeah, so welcome Merry to... Merry Christmas. Uh, and or Merry happy, Christmas. Well, and also, Happy New Year. Happy we are New Year to everybody year, out there. Yeah. yeah. So, we are in the year 2024, and yeah. it's January 4th. As of the recording. Uh, As of the recording. So whether this you're listening um, or... Or watching, or both. Uh, it's up to you. That's why we do a video, and but you're free to listen to it. There's a, yeah. So, uh... Yeah, so welcome to a new year. We got some fun things we're going to talk about in this new year and uh, new fun adventures of the Funhouse team, not just with the podcast, but also with things that we do um, outside of the podcast for our YouTube channel. So we yeah. got some fun things we'll be talking about later on in the show. We try not to go super long mm-hmm. because uh, people got lives outside of podcast <laughs> listening or watching. So some uh, interesting news with the NES and a game that was beaten is one of the topics coming up. Also, the rumor of the Switch 2, mm-hmm. and uh, unfortunate news of uh, physical media and mm-hmm. digital media. Also, a rumor of Jack Black being in a new film of a very popular video yeah. game. And some uh, interesting things found in Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're excited, and uh, we're going to get into it. There's some other little things that might pop up as we go, but again, let's uh, let's get straight into it, right? Join the Funhouse. Fun Retro Funhouse. Let's get straight to the Funhouse podcast. Yeah. Let's kick off the podcast because this was a very, very intriguing story. And this uh, actually broke in a lot of different news sites, not just gaming. Uh, but we're going to read a little bit off of the uh, IGN's uh, post for it. Mm-hmm. A 13-year-old boy, if you haven't read this, um, you can read this almost anywhere. You can probably look it up. But 13-year-old boy by the name of uh, Willis Gibson pulled off an, an, an improbable, uh, improbable feat which saw him reach level 157 by hitting, before hitting what is being called the final screen, uh, final screen kill, or so, kill screen yeah. by fans. So 157 levels. I, I didn't know you could finish Tetris, but I guess you could finish any game. Huh. There's, always a, there's always an ending with every game. Yeah. I didn't know if you could finish a game, but 157 levels of Tetris. I'm lucky if I get to stage... Three to five. Maybe three. Five is probably really pushing it for me. But I've never had a... A very a, long a, like level. Well, I've never wanted to really... Finish it? Beat Tetris. Uh-huh. I enjoy Tetris. It's fun. I played the arcade version as well as the NES version, and it's fun. But you know, for the fact that somebody... I wonder how many tries he did. Yeah. Doesn't say that in the article here, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I wonder if he beat it in one go. That'd be interesting. Imagine but, how long that would take, too. Well, 157. It says uh, to, to, to experts were only able to make it to around... Okay, so experts were only make, or able to make it around level 38, 38 before, before it became... Become impossible. Yeah, so the fact that experts could even get beat past this. 38, but huh. there's a picture of the, the 13-year-old with his... Uh, after he won, he did a uh, 15... Uh, 1,511 lines, and uh, the score was over, golly, it's a super high So score. it's basically like the max, which is like I guess all 999, max, yeah. I guess, but unless it resets. Yeah, but IGN has a picture of his uh, his look when he beat and broke, I guess you would say, Tetris. So good going, uh, good for you. Uh, that's pretty cool. That That's cool to see that someone um, beat that game, and that's fun. And yeah. it's an NES game. NES games are hard. A lot of NES games are hard. I, I still can't beat some of the NES games to this day. Personally. Um, but that, that's the first story we're going to kick off with. 13-year-old, 157 levels, beaten in 38 minutes. That's what it was. Oh, 38 minutes wow. it took him to beat it. So 30? congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So uh, let's move on to some other news. Uh, what else do we got? So in other news, uh, Jack Black, one of the most famous actors in the music in, t- <laughs> in the movie industry, is apparently might be filming a Minecraft movie mm-hmm. that is reportedly being that will be deadline wrote on a Tuesday. So we don't know when. So if you if you've seen Jack Black's Instagram, he posted something about a Minecraft book. So many fans have speculated a rumor. That this might mean there might be a video game movie about Minecraft. I wonder if it'll be live. Well, it might Maybe it probably action. might be live action. How, how would you do a live action? Because it's pixeled, right? It's yeah. A pixeled game. I've played it a couple times, but not for a long period of time. But So it this kind of raises the question. Who would be in like all the roles? But stay, stay how tuned. How many characters are there? Uh, that's kind of... There's well, a lot of, are there a lot of characters? There's those bone things, right? Those are more like 
mods though, like enemies. I don't know. Uh, well, I played it once. Stay for tuned for that, minutes. I guess. It's stay just, tuned. Just it is cool because it when you when the first time I played it, it, it reminded me of like an Atari type game because of the pixels. Yeah. Or a really basic. I don't know. It it seemed like it, and I think the guy that created it. If I'm wrong, you can let me know. But um, I think the guy that created it even kind of wanted it to have a feel of a retro game kind of, but it blew up because they're like block people. And I like I said, I played it for a few minutes, but uh, it's cool because uh, Jack Black was very successful as Bowser and Mario. So I and also in and, other yeah. popular films too. And gaming is becoming the new Marvel comic thing. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So on other news. Uh, Switch 2 is predicted to arrive this year, 2024, with a $400 price point, which is pretty cool. Um, compared to when you think of Xbox, PlayStation 5, with what they were releasing, there's that, you know. Big, they have massive a, gap of you know, money, but Nintendo's so more family oriented. Family oriented with like wanting to sell it a little more lesser mm -hmm. so it can get to places, to homes like that. Yeah. So there are some. Uh, some things that fans of Nintendo, of course, with Switch 2 coming out, because it is called the Switch 2, apparently. Um, uh, it's unconfirmed rumors that a Switch Pro was indeed in development at one point, but um, this is just something that I, I think is just going to have more speed and, and downloading the capabilities and what have you, but it, I don't think it's going to be much of a big difference. It's going to be kind of like how the, like how Wii U was with the Wii. Yeah. You know, people were disappointed with the Wii U. But and, uh, um, we might see something maybe so, different this year because hopefully. it's always been different with every NES console. Yeah. So, so there's not soon. yeah there's not much known about the device because Nintendo hasn't really dropped mentioned a, it. Yeah, they haven't dropped a picture or anything or or anything of games or anything for it. They're just letting you know. So it could be sometime early this year. I'm thinking maybe May, March or April, somewhere around there. Probably you could get a view of what it might look like, but. Who knows? But just stay tuned for the yeah, switch too. So, so stay tuned for that. Maybe we'll uh, we'll give you some more updates as the podcasts move forward through the year. Yep. Um, but four hundred dollar price point for Switch Two. That's so interesting. We'll see. So hopefully they keep the carts the same because I do like the little <laughs> the little carts. But they are can, very yeah, easy to lose. Easy to lose, but they're fun. are very easy to carry. So. But also on other news, we will be talking about a a thing that happened in Nebraska. Which is talking about a hundred of rare sealed, well, hundreds uh, of well, rare. hundreds of rare of rare sealed Nintendo and Sega games discovered in a storage facility in Nebraska, and this made this was actually kind of crazy to think this about. Made, uh, this Headlines, made news, news. This made headline news. Yeah, I guess gaming is that big that it made news. Yeah, news news, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to think. Yeah, because it yeah because the headline from one of the articles we're just reading this is off of IGN as well. They had it as well. Was the collection is likely worth tens of thousands of dollars? Um, the video game reseller has discovered hundreds of. This is kind of trying to just kind of give you a quick up uh, review of what's going on with this, but uh, hundreds of factory sold Nintendo Sega games from the eighties nineties inside a storage facility. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine? Cause Open up a storage facility and be like, whoa. Whoa. Those games are were. Well, okay. I'm pretty sure they were in totes. I think they're more like boxes. boxes. I'm pretty sure they just open a thing and then, oh, they're all yeah. over the place. But, but apparently there was hordes of uh, uh, Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Sega CD, Genesis, the Saturn, Saturn and, and the 3DO. 3DO games. Wow, that's, a, that's really pricey. They were put in there after a local store closed down in 1994. And remain untouched until now. That's crazy. 2024. So a uh, Nebraska-based reseller called Game Room found the collection and staff joked. Okay, so, so it was a, a Nebraska-based reseller. They found this. So I'm pretty sure they, they, they know what they got. They were surprised. Um, but it does says many of the copies were the less value, which I was thinking, okay, they found hundreds. How many of them were Madden or you know some kind of basketball game or... Baseball or something, which it even says here, a lot of the copies were less valued NBA, Madden games, uh, as there are interesting finds, but the, but several of the boxes, incredibly rare games, more than make up for it. So, um, this is really part. This is the part right here was really getting me on the thing. The video of the game room or what have you that the people that found it, um, they found a sealed. Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger for the Super NES, which values at over $2,400 sealed. And a and little flashback, if you remember back then during the Retro Funhouse channel when we went to Austin, uh, we traded 
It, we traded. We had the cart only. We had the cart only, but we traded for a fully sealed mm-hmm. Alf game that my dad loves a lot. And it was for the Sega Master System, and it's I was complete, fine. And he was fine with that. I was fine with letting go of Chrono Trigger. I actually picked up Chrono Trigger. I bought it somewhere. I think I forgot where I bought it. I bought it a while back, and I held on to it because I knew people want that. You know, and the whole time we were at Classic, people were wanting to buy it and trade. And I was like. I want, I want to make sure I make a good trade for this because this, this is a high value game. It's a really the high. The game was like a two hundred dollar game by itself, but very much. Um, other things that were found were for the Super NES Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. It, that was an arcade game. I yeah. remember. Yeah. That was an arcade game back in the That's a four player nineties, early nineties, early nineties, if I'm yeah. correct. And that one values at over fourteen hundred. Final Fantasy three, which yeah. is still going on today. The most recent Final Fantasy game, I think, is. I think I don't even know what the number is. It's gone up there. But, it's it's been up there. But for the a while. Final Fantasy three for Super NES was worth over twelve hundred. Uh, Sunset Riders, Sunset Riders. If you've ever played Sunset Riders, oh, it's a great game. It's a fun, fun game. cowboy I've, cartoony game. I've seen the arcade cabinet is really fun. I've actually beaten it in my uh, youth. It's a great game, and that's worth over seven fifty. Um, some of the other finds, uh, lesser titles, but several copies, of course, Aladdin. Aladdin. Um, if you know the movie, Contra Hard Corps. Um, I wasn't a big fan of it. I, I always preferred, I like Contra, but I, I always preferred the very first Contra yeah, for so, the NES. I, I can still yeah. never beat it, even with the thirty lives. So uh, the gamer said they won't be releasing any details on the overall value of the collection. I'm pretty sure they probably seen that they have a lot it's of more, high dollar things, not just what they're saying. They probably had, I mean, which is smart. I mean, if you come across all this stuff and you own a gaming. Thing, store or what have keep you. It. Do you really? Yeah, you don't really want to throw it all out there because there's some dishonest people out there. So yeah, I mean the fact that they did come across some really cool stuff. Eh, that, that's cool. I wish that that would have been cool. We would have found stuff like that. <laughs> I get excited when I just find a, a game that's like a twenty twenty five dollar game, thirty dollar game, <laughs> and I get it for two or three bucks and because I know I'm gonna play it. It's got a good value and. And I'm okay with it because I'm gonna play it. Yeah. So, but on other news, now we're going to congratulations get down. to those guys. Though. So that's really <laughs> but cool. now we get down to the news that we talked about in our last podcast. Unfortunately, we are seeing the end of physical copies now. It's the end of an era. era. Bum bum bum. So if you haven't known, this was going to be the last. Well, if you're if if you're a physical copy fan, copy then this is the last you year. You like physical copies of anything, not just games. Movies, movies, CDs. Unfortunately, every major big chain store will now be taking them off their shelves. And it kind of raises the question, will GameStop who do that? Uh, I wouldn't expect that from them. I would think GameStop would. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere in the news. But, but as we're I mean, seeing... GameStop sells a lot of physical media. I mean... GameStop is well known for physical media, not really digital. They don't sell a lot of the... F- Games like the that little a lot of people are looking for a lot of times, they, they sell, sell more of the. They'll sell games copy. they know they're going to sell, like yeah. Mario, what have you, Zelda. But, but uh, there's some games that I've been looking for that I've had a hard time finding. GameStop doesn't have it, yeah. even though over the Christmas holiday I did get uh, for Christmas I got Inspector Gadget for the Switch and, and uh, um, Operational o- Operation Wolf uh, First Mission, I think it's called. Yeah, and those are two great games that I enjoy. If you also follow the Retro Funhouse uh, Instagram, uh, I got a PS5, so now I'm moving up from my PS4, so now my dad keeps it. I'm going to move up, and it was really nice to finally have it, but uh, but it is kind of sad to think that physical copies are now going yeah. away, which kind of... Well, which basically is gone, because Best Buy did not wait Best Buy, to start yeah. pulling, because there was a picture released just the other day, like two days after the new year, and... They were already showing their shelves for physical media was basically empty. There was maybe a couple, if a handful, of physical. So they are done, which makes you wonder what, what are they going to fill the space with? Who knows? I kind of wonder what that mean because I'm a vinyl collector. That's I love this cup a lot. Well, that would, makes you wonder if vinyl is going to be gone because that's physical. Yeah, so... Because they want to push digital downloads, maybe? Who knows? But who knows? I mean, it does suck for physical for physical copy yeah. lovers but this kind of also gives uh, retro stores local to your area uh, uh, yeah. it gives them more business if you think about it because now since they sell most local re- retro stores will sell physical copies they won't do digital mm-hmm. so this kind of pushes them to having more business so it kind of leads to the question 
what will happen to a lot of the physical copies now since digital is now trying to become the new physical mm -hmm. and uh, this one just in oh uh, wow looks like Silent Hill 2 is being remade seemingly for confirmed for 2024 release a new PlayStation trailer apparently is coming or is out I'm not a big horror game player I never I love have been a lot of horror games um, I, I don't mind playing like Nightmare on Elm Street or, or Friday, 13th. Friday 13th on NES because they're more silly. I mean, Purple Suit Jason is just fun. It's, it's silly. the most iconic, but too. I've never game. been a horror fan, never. So to basically um, explain, the, if you do remember, the in the original PlayStation, Silent Hill and Resident Evil were the two big contenders for the and horror Silent Hill's genre. been around for a, for a while. Silent Hill started as soon as Resident Evil started, too. Which, they've been going on for a while too. Resident Evil did just remake 4, which is one of their most popular games. And now we're seeing Silent Hill giving a remaster mm -hmm. to Silent Hill 2. I personally so. love the franchise. I thought it made a lot of sense. Because we yeah. were because I love horror games a lot. Some of the horror games now that you kind of see are kind of... They're more on the other side of horror. Mm -hmm. I prefer some of the old school classics. Like Friday the 13th, that is a horror game but uh, it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. seeing Silent Hill 2 make yeah, a return. And it also looks like Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake uh, will be... There's a uh, there's going to be a trailer coming soon, if not now. So it looks like a lot of classic games from the past are being remade. Of course, because of the graphics you have now, it's going to look more realistic. Um, a lot harder to play, at least yeah. for myself. Um, there, was a, there was a story I thought... Oh, here it is. Oh, so Disney has officially has, has dethroned the high or Disney the Disney has been dethroned as highest grossing distributor for 2023 and that's mainly because of What's the Mario doing drum movie. roll too? Apparently there's two movies. One of them is Mario. Thank I love the Mario yeah, movie. One was Mario and, and the other uh, one was Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. If you don't know what Oppenheimer is about, it's about the very it's first atomic movie. it's about the very Mario. first atomic bomb. And, uh, I'm pretty sure people know what it's yeah. about because but it's it a made very a lot good of money. Movie. But yeah, it looks like Mario because Mario made over a billion dollars in the global box office, which is not uh, not surprising because yeah. we own the DVD copy of it. We uh, we've watched it many many times. Um, the younger kids really enjoy the Mario. I think it was well made. There was a lot of criticism over the voice actors, but I thought they I thought it was fine. I, Apparently, I, too. I enjoyed it. Me and my wife, we all watched it. When it came out opening weekend, yeah, and it I was remember. great. I loved it. I was laughing. I loved the throwbacks and all the fun stuff with it. It was a great movie. I thought it was great. And apparently, too, Chris Pratt, the voice actor of Mario in this new movie, will be appearing in Garfield. Apparently, yeah, so I Garfield heard about this. Back. Garfield is going to be a movie, and Chris Pratt will now be the. Here's one. Here's the one. Here's the one. This is one I'm excited for because uh, I always butcher his name. Uh, but let's the just say Smash Bros. creator. Uh, Sakura, I could be. We need Heidi for this. Um, <laughs> says he's still focused on making games. And this is for Nintendo. Yeah. Um, he's the Super Smash Bros. and Kirby director. And he revealed he's still making games while juggling his recent shift into becoming a video game YouTuber. Huh. I need to go check him out. Um, but so, in other words, he's not planning on retiring, which is fine. I that's mean, cool. He's going to keep doing what he does, and, and that's cool. Um, other than that, I mean. That's what we have for you for the podcast this week. Some or other this, this some episode, other. but some other things to be aware of. Um, January twenty, the twentieth and the twenty first, we will most likely be heading to the ATG. The ATG. I keep messing this up so many times. We'll be heading to the AT, ATG Waco Siege uh, Expo there, so you will see the Retro yeah, Funhouse the crew ATG there. ATG Expo. Uh, was it January twenty first and twenty okay, or twentieth and twenty? The twenty. Okay, then I was right. So Waco, Texas, ATG Expo. That's where we're going to be heading for. We're going to be uh, heading there. Another episode of the Retro Funhouse Channel. Because I mean, it's been a while too since yeah. we filmed. And they do a, they do a good job. It's a fun event. Um, they're going to have some fun uh, special guests. It looks like uh, you, might, you might see. Looks like Sergeant Slaughter will be there. Uh, honky Tonk uh, Man. Honky Tonk Man. Um, Daniel Pacina and, and Carlos, Carlos Pacina, Pacina, which they were voice actors uh, in the Mortal well, Kombat series. I think Daniel Pacina was, was the actual. He was the original Johnny Cage, and I think he was also Sub Zero Scorpion and Reptile for the original 
Mortal Kombat arcade cabinets, which would be cool. We're awesome. And then I'm, you know, there's a uh, Paulie Nehemiah is going to be there. He's also a big part of a uh, uh, Mortal Kombat. Some of the more bigger games and stuff uh, like there's that. There's some uh, some uh, voice actors. Um, Gianna Ellis, who is, I'm pretty. It's pretty cool because she's the voice of Princess Peach from the original Mario Bros. cartoon from the late '80s. Uh, Preston Corbell, who's going to be there, who was a part of Cabin Fever horror movie, um, uh, One Tree Hill, which is a '90s uh, teen flick show, sitcom, maybe not a sitcom. I've never heard like of a it. teen drama type show. I never watched it. Also, uh, um, I guess. and some other things. He was part of some Marvel TV shows. Um, Daniel Crane will be there, which will be exciting because he was a big part of a lot of the uh, Atari games, uh, creating them. Games like uh, Ghostbusters, Pitfall, um, Night Trap, Night Trap, which is one I have for the Switch, and uh, it's still difficult. Also, um, Dan Kitchen. Dan Kitchen, who was a part of some, uh, he was a part of Grandma's Boy, which I've seen that movie. Uh, it's interesting. Um, Bust a Move is a fun game. <laughs> and Bart Simpson, the Bart Simpson game. I think it's Bart vs. the World or the Mutant. Uh, I can't think. Uh, maybe who knows? I know we have that game, but uh, also Gary Kitchen. Gary Kitchen I guess they're related. I guess they could be brothers. He worked on Home Alone, which I'm excited to talk to him about Home Alone. Huh? Cause I beat that game. Really? On the Super NES, I beat that game one time. But he, the Ghostbusters as well, boy, and his blob. Um, we'll also be seeing Brandon Foster, which looks I think he's like a magician. A magician possibly. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. I would love to talk um, to him. Good friend of the show, George G to the next level, who is the second expert. And he really is. The guy really enjoys Sonic. Sega. He enjoys Sonic. Uh, anything to do with Sonic, Knuckles, Tails. Uh, he's we'll a good guy, great guy. He's really fun. They'll have all kinds of uh, cosplayers there. Some, we'll some also fun see some trivia. trivia and stuff like that. Um, and my personal favorite, the ATX Ghostbusters. Yeah. I love talking and about it. And the 501st Legion will be there. And some other fun stuff will be going on there. There was some other things I thought that was going on there. Uh, it was activities. Yeah, there it is. There will be a lot of interesting things. Also, there will be, be a video lot of, game tournaments. There will be Mortal Kombat One, Fortnite. Which taken. Mortal Kombat One is weird because it's more supposed to be Mortal Kombat, I guess, rebooted. So restarted. Mortal they Kombat to One has a lot of interesting things, though. They wanted they, to restart the whole series. Yeah, so it's weird. So Fortnite, Taken Seven. If you haven't played Taken Eight. I would recommend playing well, I it. I think Tekken 7 is the new one. No, Tekken 8 just came out. I haven't out, played actually. Tekken since 4, but... Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, one yeah. of my personal favorites. Street Fighter 6, which is the newest Street Fighter game in the series. Mm-hmm. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah, they also have some other tournaments going on with... Uh, Mario Kart Double, Double Dash, Dash, the original some table Smash... Tennis. Some original Smash Bros. I'm really, really interested, and I might join for the Shaq Fu. If That's it's on, if it's on the Sega Genesis, and we also have Doctor Mario and Tetris, Guitar Hero Three, come on, one of my personal favorites. Tetris. You'll see me there. I wonder if the thirteen-year-old kid will be here for the, if he will come down to play Tetris. And That'd be beat cool. It that would everybody. be cool. I wonder if he's ever tried to beat it again. And Halo Two, which yeah, is an old so. classic. Also, if you remember back then, when if we you went watched there, the video when we went, yeah, there will be the Reflection Entertainment, which is more like a it's motion a, sensor camera touchless experience. Which was really fun when we went to it. It was yeah, actually pretty yeah. cool. It was a it was a fun experience. It was. It took a minute to understand how that worked, but, but it was really cool. I, I enjoyed it. So, so uh, yeah, it's all kinds of fun stuff. It's it's just a lot of fun stuff. They do have the Mario Kart Live, Live, which you actually get to drive the little Mario Kart controllers around the track that they build. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. I we did have it. It was really cool. We did used to have it, but it was. I think I yeah, always I, loved I it. I think that's a big hit. I think that's really fun. There's all kinds of stuff they have going on out there. Um, just uh, stay, just stay ready all kinds for of that. that yeah. For that, they're going to have panels. They're going to have laser tag and disc golf challenge after if, party. If you don't remember the if you don't remember the disc golf challenge that I did where I got the further where I got the far one on my first attempt, mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to redo it and do it on my first attempt again. Which if I do, I'm gonna be more excited. But uh, that is everything yeah, that's that what that we got. Oh, all and uh, later this year, well, March, we're gonna be going to Retro Fest. You'll see us. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. It's one of our favorite uh, go to conventions we do. Uh, some other great conventions. Retro Palooza is gonna be coming. Um, I mean, you name it, we go to it. Um, we do have our Super Famicom now hooked up finally. We've had it for like a year, and we just kept forgetting to put it together. It's working, and we got all our Super Famicom games on it. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can't understand the games. Because they're but all Heidi, Heidi does speak some Japanese. 
well, she reads can't a little, translate it too. so she can translate some of it. We're still trying to work uh, on the Famicom, but that might take a while too. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. But uh, stay tuned for that. Also, too, stay tuned for that video to come soon. Yeah. And also, just enjoy. We hope that you enjoy the Retro Funhouse podcast. Your feedback does help us up, help yeah. us a lot. So uh, just make sure that um, not just watch or listen to the podcast, but subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Instagram, our Facebook. Facebook. Um, join a Funhouse Retro, Retro Funhouse. Fun I'm and, Yankee. Uh, I'm Ben. So uh, and uh, stay tuned mm-hmm. because. Funhouse team is working on some stuff. We're getting a new video we're working on for the channel. We're excited. And yeah. uh, that's the news we've got for the podcast. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope you leave us a comment and uh, follow us. And uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's all we got. So until next time, again, we'll see you on the flip side. Yep.